Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. In times of needs and troubles and trials and temptations, a good place to go is the letter of James, first chapter. So I will be sharing from James 1, various verses. Start off with uh, verse 2, and this is from the Passion Translation. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it as an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete and needing nothing. This week I was thinking about this, what to share this morning, and about our lives as Christians and the things that we face, and which can be very challenging and difficult. And I, I thought about salmon. <laughs> I love to see salmon, I love to eat them, I love to fish for them. <laughs> but if you know anything about Pacific or Atlantic salmon, how they migrate and how they go back to the place of their birth. And you know, they start out being born in upstream and they start out as little minnows and they they get the ride downstream and go into the ocean and be in the wonderful currents of the ocean and live in the ocean for a period of time. But there comes a time when they're drawn back to the place of their birth. They're drawn back as we are drawn back to God, the place, our source. They're drawn back there, but the only problem is they have to go against the current. They have to go upstream. They have to go in over rapids sometimes, a little falls. You've all seen the pictures of those salmon jumping up over falls and bears trying to catch them. <laughs> they have many obstacles that they have to face going against the current, getting banged around, jostled around, but they're heading towards their destiny. To give their life away, that's what they do, they give their life away so that a new generation can have new life. So they head upstream. Against all odds, they head upstream and they deal with all the opposition and the current and all the problems that they face. They don't take it easy in their old age. <laughs> they have no retirement plan. They don't, they're not spending their kids' inheritance. Just think the way we are in our culture. We, uh, as you get older, the, the idea is that you just do everything for yourself. No, they give their life away. They do everything for others, for the next generation of salmon. And actually, what they give away and their, the whole process benefits the whole ecosystem, and many benefit from it. So as we are drawn to return to God and to find our destiny in what he has for us, not moving towards, with the current, towards our own selfish desires, but moving against the current of culture, the current, in order to give ourselves away, in order to endure many things 
for the sake of the gospel. Jesus himself said, I have told you that on, you will have my peace, but he says here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. He is our rock in the midst of those storms and troubles. The Apostle Peter writes in 1 Peter 1, 6, There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. That little while seems very long at times. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is more precious than mere gold. Peter again writes in the fourth chapter, verse 12, Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you have been going through, as if something strange were happening to you. Instead, be very glad, for these trials make you a partner with Christ and his suffering so that you will have wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it is revealed to all the world. It's not a strange thing. It not, should not be surprising. It should not be considered unusual when we face trials and temptations and testings. When we are tested, Sometimes, if we respond rightly to testing, it causes us to draw on what is deep within us, the presence of the Lord in our lives. It causes us to be purified. It pushes us to depend more and more on God. And it can even produce joy and happiness in the midst of sorrow. It's an opportunity to see prayers answered, to experience God's grace, to develop your character in Christ, your patience, your endurance, your long suffering. But we don't always respond well to testing. And James' advice is when you're in the midst of this testing, you should ask God for wisdom because he is willing to give it. God is willing to give you understanding and wisdom in the midst of what you do and are experiencing. But you need to approach God in faith, not doubting, not being ambivalent, a person at one moment believing and the next moment doubting. Not being double-minded. James says that's like being tossed on the sea to and fro by the wind. You come to God and you ask in faith. You ask and you listen. You seek in the midst of the hardship. And when you find yourself being overwhelmed with doubt and unbelief and being pulled aside by other things, you need to repent of it. You need to ask God to help you to renounce unbelief, to renounce those feelings that God somehow has left you and that you are alone to speak in faith and seek his help. James goes on to write, in, starting in 1.12, if your faith remains strong, even while surrounded by life's difficulties, you will continue to experience the untold blessings of God. True happiness comes as you pass the test with faith and receive the victorious crown promised to every lover of God. 
True happiness comes when you pass the test of faith. But so often we grumble, we complain, we doubt. We ask God, why is this happening to me? You know, James understood the nature, the human nature. He understood our situation. When we are tempted and tested, he, he gave us this advice. He says, when you are tempted, don't say, God is tempting me. For God is incapable of being tempted by evil, and he never is the source of temptation. Instead, it is each person's own desires and thoughts that drag them into evil and lure them away into darkness. Evil gives birth to evil actions and then sin. It's so easy in the midst of hardship and temptation to blame God. It's so easy to think somehow God is trying to bring you down, to cause you to fall. But that's a lie. Don't say God has tempted me. We are, it's, the problem is within us, not with God. God is good, as we sang. God is good all the time. All the time, he is good. He has good things in store for us. He does not tempt us. We know who the tempter is. The Bible identifies him as Satan. And we know that the source of temptation and struggle is often the sinful de desires in our own hearts that we need to deal with. And James goes on to says, every gift God freely gives us is good and perfect, streaming down from the Father of lights, shining from the heavens with no hidden shadows or darkness, and is never subject to change. What God does is good, because God is good. There is no darkness, no hidden agenda in God. He is the Father of lights. He is good all the time. He is great and loving and kind. And it's so easy to question the goodness of God. People do it all around us in our culture. Probably the greatest temptation there is out there. We hear it in the media. We hear it, read it in books. We see it in liter literature and movies and videos and everything. The greatest temptation is to question the goodness of God. Question the love of God. Question his faithfulness. Question whether his word is true. Whether he will answer prayers. Whether he really cares for us. Whether he has some kind of hidden agenda that is not good, that it will hurt us and destroy us. Can we trust God? Can we really believe his word? The answer is yes. Yes and amen. He has shown it to us through his son, Jesus Christ. People are always looking for a reason to reject God. They're always looking for a reason to rebel, and to be angry, to be offended because of things in their life and because of the world around them. Why is there so much suffering? Why is there so much evil? Why do the innocent die young. It must be God's fault, people say. It's not his fault. He's done everything possible to do to show and reveal his goodness and his love. The problem is with us. The problem is with evil forces that want to take us away from God. The problem is being in a comfortable place where we don't want to go upstream and return to that place of destiny that God is calling us to. We don't want to fight against the current. We want to go with the current no matter where it takes us. We don't want to face trials and tribulation. We certainly don't want to face persecution. 
We don't want people to look down upon us because of what we believe and what we stand for. So we want to look for the easy way out. But that's not the way that leads to life. That's not the way that God has called us to live. He has given us the resources we need. They are within us if we have Christ within us. We believe in the gospel. Don't listen to the many lies around you. Don't be offended by your circumstances and turn away from God. Often when people are in hard situations, they may stop praying, they may stop reading their scriptures, they may stop attending church and having fellowship, they may let their love grow cold. It's the worst possible thing you can do in the midst of hardship. You're supposed to do the opposite. You draw close to God. You thank God. You remember what he's done in the past. You pray, you seek him, you, you stay in his word. You stay in connection with the people of God so that he can speak to you and he can encourage you as he has here this morning, giving you words of encouragement, psalms and spiritual songs and hymns for you to sing unto the Lord. We are called for a greater purpose. It's not all about ourselves and our comfort. We are called to give our lives away, even as Christ did. To follow that example, to follow in his footsteps, to suffer as he suffered, to be tried and tempted even as he was but learning to be victorious through his grace. Let us continue the journey of faith, no matter what we face in the days to come. Amen. I'm going to close with a different hymn. It's not the one in the bulletin. It's going to be, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus, number 462. Just to rest upon his peace.